Hi and welcome to my new channel Murder Mystery Madness. This is actually my second channel. Um, I usually make paranormal videos but criminal history is another one of my interests so I thought I'd give it a go. Okay so today's story is about a man called Dr Thomas Neil Cream but was he really Jack the Ripper? He was born in Scotland in 1850. Thomas was the eldest of eight brothers and sisters. The family moved to Canada when Thomas was four years old. In 1872, Thomas registered as a medical student in Montreal and he graduated with honours in 1876. Soon after, he went on to meet Flora Elizabeth Brooks, whose father owned a luxury hotel. He was quite a wealthy man. Flora soon became pregnant, but neither her or Thomas wanted the baby so Thomas decided to perform an abortion on Flora, nearly killing her in the process. Understandably, her father was very, very angry and insisted they got married. I mean, why? This man nearly kills your daughter, so surely you'd want him well away from her. Anyway, they did get married and, he's, and Thomas left for England the next day where he registered as a graduate student at St Thomas Hospital in London. He also qualified as a physician and surgeon in Edinburgh. A few years later, Thomas returned to Canada and began a career as an abortionist. Yes, really. His career was quite promising until the body of a young chambermaid named Kate Gardner was discovered at Thomas's office with a bottle of chloroform laying beside her. Despite the evidence against him, Thomas was not charged with murder. He decided to take his business to Chicago, where his murderous tendencies began to show. In 1880, Julia Faulkner died under mysterious circumstances and Thomas was arrested on charges of murder, but he once again escaped conviction. When Thomas wasn't murdering women or aborting babies, he came, came up with his own concoction of drugs to combat epilepsy. He built up a fairly large following of patients who swore by the treatment. One of his patients was called Daniel Stott, and he made the terrible mistake of sending his wife Julia to Thomas's office for regular doses of the epileptic medication for her husband. Unfortunately for Daniel, his wife was getting more than medication from the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. When he became suspicious of the affair, Thomas decided to add a bit of poison to Daniel's medicine. Unfortunately, he did die and if it wasn't for Thomas's stupid stupidity, then he would have gotten away with the murder. Daniel's death was originally attributed to epilepsy. But for some bizarre reason, Thomas wrote to the coroner's office and said that the pharmacist was responsible for the death and requested that the body be exhumed. What's wrong with this man? Daniel's body was exhumed and they found the poison in his stomach that Thomas had given him. Thomas was imprisoned in the Illinois State Penitentiary. Although it was a life sentence, Thomas was released on good behaviour in 1891. After his release, he took a quick trip to Canada to collect an inheritance of $16,000. And he left for England, where he ended up in the slums of South London. Just two days after his arrival in London, he met a prostitute called Matilda Clover who was later to die from Lux Vomica poisoning. The same fate befell on a lady called Ellen Donworth, but just like his first murders, Thomas was uncharged. After a short break from his murders, Thomas poisoned two women, Alice Marsh and Emma Shrivel. 
he probably would have gotten away with these murders if it wasn't for his own actions. You see, he decided to accuse his neighbour of the two murders, and he even went as far as bribing the neighbour, Joseph Harper. Thomas said he had incriminating evidence against Joseph, and if he gave him £1,500, then he would not share his knowledge with the police. Joseph refused and Thomas eventually gave up on his attempt. Thomas was soon bragging to others about his vast knowledge of the murders, even going as far as taking a man on tour of the murder scenes. He did the same with a Mr McIntyre, but unfortunately for Thomas, Mr McIntyre was actually a police sergeant. Du -du -du. He then began surveillance on the Dirty Doctor. A PC Cumley then came forward and said he had seen Thomas with the two women on the night of their deaths, so he also began to watch him. Thomas's attempt at blackmailing Joseph Harper was soon revealed to the police and Thomas was finally arrested. He was charged and found guilty of the death of Matilda Clover and was sentenced to hang on November the 15th, 1892. As news fell and squeezed the life out of him, he uttered the words, I am Jack. As the river murder scare was still in full force, they immediately assumed he had confessed to being Jack the Ripper. So, was he Jack the Ripper? And I had to do um, some further research. It didn't mention anything about his wife, Flora, so I had to do some research about that and um, she did actually pass away not long after they got married so I assume it was from complications from the botched abortion so Thomas finally got his comeuppance and you know they'll never know was he really Jack the Ripper? was it his style? who knows anyway I hope you enjoyed this video if you could help me out and just click the subscribe button and keep and the bell keep an eye out for more videos. See you next time. Bye!